So we'll go ahead and get kick, things kicked off here. Obviously, uh, Chris is being a slacker, um, you know, with the rest of these losers that are in Costa Rica for the week. Boo, hiss, um, jealousy. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> they'll be back this weekend, I believe. Um, so, <clears throat> but I uh, wanted to uh, take an opportunity to uh, obviously uh, circle the team. Uh, J originally, Jeremiah and I were going to uh, lead the call today. Uh, but he and I, uh, along with P uh, Penny Blackman, were uh, um, uh, asked to host uh, Jacob Pogue's builder call yesterday, which we were on. <clears throat> and then um, uh, Jacob, was, excuse me, Jeremiah was actually uh, asked to host uh, uh, Jacob's team call this morning as well. So I just told him, you know, I would take care of this call, you know, myself. Uh, we got a couple of guest speakers on that I think you'll be able to find a lot of uh, a benefit and take away from this morning. And uh, Jeremiah. Uh, again, I'm not sure what time Jacob's call is, but I know you're focused on preparing uh, for assisting him with that while he uh, he's out as well in Costa Rica. So um, let me start off by saying, first and foremost, what a monster, monster first week for September. I mean, this is ridiculous. It, I mean, there's so many folks uh, that are uh, that, that are off to a phenomenal start here uh, for the month of September. And I just want to kind of do a quick recap on the leaderboards for this last week um, and kind of where folks stand. Um, and, 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 and that there's a couple of applications that are still in ACC approved of uh, being first time with writers. So I'll make a mention of a couple of those, but um, just want to run down, um, you know, a few of the folks that are, that are on here first and foremost um, at, uh, at, at number 12, uh, we got Mr. John Gilliam, uh, had one app that's a debt-free life app for thirteen hundred and fifteen dollars. Uh, so he's, he's he's written a couple of those so far, which is awesome. You know, to continue to write some of those debt-free life uh, applications uh, for folks. Then we had Mr. Jerry uh, Jeffrey Thiel with two applications for seventeen ninety-four uh, an APV. He's uh, I'm sorry, let me go back. Mr. John Gilliam, I apologize, is direct to me. Uh, and then Jeffrey Thiel with two apps for seventeen ninety-four is direct to Jeremiah Nolan. Then we have uh, Miss Danielle Gregg in the mix, killing it with the IULs again, still uh, with one app for $1,800 direct to Mr. Brett Applin. Then at number nine, Miss Donna Bates with three apps for $24,24.51 direct to Mr. Blair Cushion. Uh, Mr. Jerry Denton with three apps for $2,497 direct to Mr. Matt Glass uh, in the Nolan Agency. Uh, then Mr. Brian Neal with one app for $2,952, again, uh, direct to Mr. Jeremiah Nolan. Uh, Blair Cushion, Spencer, with three apps for $3,383.40, direct to Mr. Chris Menifee. Greg Shapiro with two apps for $3,600, uh, direct to Chris Menifee. Then myself, number four, with six apps for $7,803, uh, direct to Mr. Chris Menifee. Then Mr. John Nicholas, First month, four apps, $8,261.52, direct to Mr. Be Brett Applin and the Better Agency. Then Mr. Jeremiah Nolan himself, leading from the front, three applications uh, for um, uh, $8,787.36, direct to Mr. Chris Menifee. And then at number two, we've got Miss Stella Dinwoody at uh, eight applications for $10,298.52 but she does have another app that's an agency approved for about another 2,100 that'll put her at 12,398 for the week in her first week of September. Uh, and then we've got coming in at number one with a monster first week. This guy went out yesterday and he's actually running an appointment now. So the week's not over for him. I know several folks have appointments for the day as well. But Mr. Brett Applin with three applications, 16,296 in APV, and that includes two max case annuities that cap at 7,500 promotable APV. There was a total of two annuities for $524,000. So I want you to keep in mind, if you look at what that is with F&G at his particular contract level, helping those folks put their money in a safer place where the principal is protected, it's not subjected to the volatile ups and downs of the market, he helped those folks lay out their retirement, 
and his commission on that particular sale is going to be right at $40,000. If you don't think that'll change your forecast and what you're doing in your business, you might want to start asking these questions and bam family people when you're in the meetings with the, the, the appointments. Bam fam meaning book a meeting from a meeting for new folks who might not know what that means. So that you can be able to find the money, you know, find other options for folks uh, for things that they need, you know, where we can help these people um, because a lot of folks are nervous about where their money is at and what it's doing. So um, we're going to actually, as part of our call today, we're going to have uh, 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 Brett and a couple of his folks talk a little bit here um, about some of those things. So I'm going to leave that for his conversation. But what a monster first week to September. I mean, today is the sixth, and that's his business through the fifth, which is just yesterday. So what a great start to the month here. Um, we had a killer month last month uh, for um, – for August, which the, the leaderboards were posted on the group me already, you know, for folks and where we ended up for the month. And um, did we recap those already, Lori, on the call or we just posted on the group me? I can't recall. Say it, say that again. I said the leaderboards for last month for August. Yep, it's attached, it, it, yep, it's in there. Is it, hold on, let me grab it real quick. Yeah, it's in the first one. Oh, in the first one. Okay, yep. hold on one second. My yep. apologies, because I think I, did, I I moved that one. I didn't think that that was the right one. So give me a second. That was from this morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it goes. Okay, thank you. I see it now. Thank you. I was looking at it originally on my iPad. So uh, I do want to I do want to cover uh, the leaderboards for um, for last month, uh, since this is our first call, really after the end of the month here, and then we're going to tee up a special guest that we've got on the call from John Hancock with us today. We've got a special uh, guest. She's gonna come on and speak to us about um, uh, some of the things that we've got going uh, on with John Hancock. I know there's several folks in the team uh, who found a lot of success in writing with them. And she's gonna end up talking to us a little bit about some options and products from them as well. Uh, and that's Miss Audrey, Audrey Anders. And we'll tee her up in just a moment, okay? And Audrey, I'll see you on the call. All right, there you go. Um, so just to recap the numbers for last month, uh, for our, our team specifically within the, uh, the Menifee, Nolan, and Better Agencies, um, we'll start off with um, the top 10 in APV for the month last month. At number 10 was Mr. Greg Shapiro for the month of August with $9,587. Way to go, Greg. And then we had uh, number nine, Miss Donna Bates with $10,486. Mr. Jeremiah Nolan himself with $11,100. Miss Laura Pollard with $11,339 last month. Miss Julia Pappas, again, leading from the front, $15,753. Mr. Spencer Cushion, $17,239. Miss Danielle Gregg in her first month last month in August, with $17,870, wow. Mr. Brett Applin himself, uh, 18,846. And as we heard on our call last week, the amazing, the phenomenal, the one and only Miss Stella Dinwiddie with $20,812 last month, what a month. And then at number one for the month last month was myself at $22,050. Um, for, uh, for the top 10 for app count, uh, Mr. Jonathan Derrimer, uh, who is uh, actually running another appointment today, direct to me. Uh, he's in the field today himself. Um, it was his first month, and he had eight applications submitted. Miss Donna Bates, nine applications. Danielle Gregg, nine applications. Greg Shapiro, 12. Jeremiah Nolan, 12. Mr. Brett Applin, 14. Myself with 15 applications. Miss Julia Pappas with 18. Mr. Spencer Cushion with 20 applications. And here she is, Miss Stella Dinwiddie with 22 applications for the month submitted in the month of August. Outstanding job. Um, I do want to cover the top builders because uh, that's part of the topic that I'm going to talk about a little bit today uh, is building and, and trying to grow your team and organization. For the top five builders for the month of August, these are apps submitted uh, for new recruits. Um, within their organizations. You had Mr. Spencer Cushion with six new apps. Mr. Chris Menifee himself with eight apps. Ms. Julia Pappas with nine apps. 
and Mr. D Brett Applin with 11 apps, and then myself with 11 apps for uh, the month of August. Uh, 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 submissions, so uh, not to be confused with applications for clients. These are the packets. Um, and then we had a bunch of new writers this last month. Um, for the month of August, our new writers, this means these are brand new people that came in and wrote business for the first time. You have uh, Mr. Wacy Adkins, who's direct to myself, Tiffany West, who's direct to Mr. Brett Applin, Mr. John Nicholas, direct to Brett Applin, Ms. Mara Mintz, Mara, I'm sorry, Mara Mintz, Ms. Danielle Gregg, uh, who is direct to Mr. Brett Applin, Mr. John Martini, uh, direct to myself, Mr. Jonathan Durham, or direct to myself, and Ms. Melanie Delgado, all brand new writers for the month of August. Uh, so congratulations to everybody in, in having a phenomenal month in August. And by all accounts, looking at the numbers so far here that we've got here in this first re week, uh, this should be a record month for many, many people on this team. Um, I do want to remind folks that the month of August was a five-week turn-in, so we got an extra week to submit business. So the key now is to be able to back that up and have the same or better production with four weeks turn-in. So keep that in mind. Looking at the calendar here, Friday the 27th of September is the last day of turn-in uh, for business submittal for uh, the month of September. Okay. Awesome job to everybody on the uh, leaderboards, both for last month and to start this month off here for September for many, many folks on the call. Um, so let's get over to our special guest. She was kind enough to join us. And I know um, I want to be respectful of her time, get her on here with us and then be able to cover that. And then Audrey, whenever you're done, you're welcome to stay with us or you can jump off. We've got a few other team uh, uh, conversations to cover today, but certainly appreciate you being able to join us this morning. So from John Hancock, I'd like to welcome Ms. Audrey Anders. Can you hear me? I can hear you. There you go. Hello, hello. Rock and roll. Awesome. Thanks for Audrey, everybody. Who, oh, oh, can you guys hear me okay? Audrey, who? Yeah. Say that I'm again. Here. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, if you're not okay. on the call, if you're not on the call uh, uh, speaking, if you could mute your line for us, there was some background noise. Okay. Awesome. Big All audience. right, everybody. Well, thank you guys for letting me uh, barge in on your meeting today. I really appreciate it. Um, this, uh, for those of you who I haven't talked to you before, some of you, I see a lot of names that I recognize, people I've talked to. So um, I am one of the product trainers for the Simple Term with Vitality product. If you haven't talked to me, you may have talked to somebody named Dave or James. We're kind of the three main go-tos. We uh, have done some reshuffling, so I've really tried to focus in on just symmetry agents and also, the more we talk with each other, we try to grab everybody who's in the same hierarchy too. So hopefully I will have everybody who's on in the Menifee Agency on my team. If not, I'll steal you away. So just have to know who you are. But um, just wanted to uh, bring all of you guys together because we have a uh, webinar training that's coming out and I'm actually working with Lori right now on getting some of that scheduled. So all of those details are to come, but you know, just to let you know what I do and what you can expect from me, even in the meantime, until we get all these scheduled, I cover like a one-stop shop for all of your product training questions. You know, I also I'll started this because I just wanted to make sure everybody had their materials, understood how the whole vitality part of it works because it's a little overwhelming sometimes. So I can handle contracting questions, commission questions, short of anything, you know, like what is my comp level? That's the only thing I really can't do because that's all through symmetry. But, you know, issues with the app not working, I, you know, I cover pretty much everything. I mean, I always have all the answers, but I at the very least know exactly where to go to get them. So I can at least be your first place to go whenever you uh, are running into any kind of trouble. So, um, like I said, around, I'd say, July, I started working exclusively with the symmetry agents, so I was able to get a really good deep dive. Um, I had some really great agents that I've talked to in depth who filled me in on everything that new agents learn, the pitches that you guys do in the home. So, I took all of the frequently asked questions that I got from agents, and I combined all that with some of the in the home presentations and everything that I've learned about symmetry and created this webinar series. So 
intended to be really easy, simple, sales focused, not going to be one of the boring trainings that you maybe have sat through where it's very heavy handed on, let's say the Apple watches. This is really focused for you um, and teaching you how to sell it, underwriting niches, um, in, like I said, in the home presentations, client opportunities outside of just finding people who are in the gym. So this is very, very customized and tailored to help you guys think of new ways to sell it. But most importantly, you know how to sell already. So this is just popping it right in and making it really easy. So anyway, in the meantime, you guys can reach out to me or if you're not going to be around for the next couple of weeks or if you have a sale in between now and then, you are more than welcome to reach out to me anytime. There is seriously no question that is too small. I, my whole job is just to make sure that you feel confident so that you can turn around and be confident in front of your clients too and answer all their questions and also make sure that you know where all of your resources are so that anytime you don't have an answer, you know exactly where to go and aren't like fumbling around because that's no fun, right? So um, let me see here. I, what else? I had a couple things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, there are going to be a couple of big announcements in the meantime. So if you are not contracted yet, this one is actually a pretty big deal. I've been campaigning hard for this one back at the home office. So um, we are waiving the E&O requirement effective immediately. So if you do not have E&O insurance, that is no longer a problem. You are free and clear to submit your contracting if you have not already. Um, another thing that I thought everybody would know, I have to thank one of, one of the symmetry agents for letting me know about this because I didn't realize it was actually a big deal. But um, if you decided you wanted to test drive one of these policies on yourself, the commissions are 75% advanced, just like they would be if you were taking care of anybody else. So a lot of agents really like to know that because they need a little bit of a jump start and runway. So just something to think about and will probably be a great way to help learn about what the experience is like. But just want you guys to know that. I actually even mentioned this back at the home office on our last call last Friday and said, hey, you know, is, did you know that this is a thing? And they were like, we didn't but we're so confident in how great they're gonna love it. We are. We hope that every agent gets one because we just think that they're gonna to love to tell the story as soon as they have it. So pretty cool. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to mention, this came about last night actually, marketing team called me because I heard from a lot of you guys that you wanted more leave behind materials for the clients and things like that. So um, marketing department called me and said, okay, you know, here's a set of three questions that we want to start asking agents, you know, what they need to be successful, what they're looking for. I don't think you guys probably realize just how much visibility is on this product and on the success of it. Everything that I have talked to agents about, hearing about feedback, like I can't sell it because of this. I need to have this. Here's the story that I tell. These are the leads that I buy. All of that feedback goes right back to the home office. I was in Boston, you know, at the home office in front of all of the leadership and the actuaries who developed the product. I mean, it really goes up to the top rung. So we are making all kinds of changes. Your feedback is super, super important. So I don't care if you tr have trouble selling it. I just want to know why you can't, because then I can actually try to help make it better. Um, we are bringing out, if you haven't talked to me lately and haven't heard some of the things, I have some of this in the webinars, but just to let you guys know, um, heard from everyone, I need a full ROP writer. Well, that's coming. It'll probably be the latter part of Q4, along with the agent portal that will give you customized reports, being able to view your hierarchy, run reports any way you want, your at clients apps, all that good stuff. Um, so with some other things we're bringing about a 25 and a 30 year term. So those are coming out probably Q4, um, all kinds of things that you guys have said that you need. I think accidental death is also going to be Q4. So there's a lot of great things that are coming. Um, so if you guys have any questions or feedback, I mean, there's another, I've, trust me, we're working on, I've heard convertibility. I've heard the other two living benefit writers for chronic and critical. I've, I heard it all. We are, everything is going that way. Um, and just to answer another question that I get a lot, just to throw it out there, since you guys know you have proprietary access to this product, 
um, the contract that you have is just right now for simple term with Vitality, but we're working on simple IUL, potentially a simple whole life, which will be like a final expense product. And what I mean by simple is just, it, that is the instant decision engine. So taking that um, instant decision, instant issue, all digital, like having that right done before you even leave the house, that part of it, that chassis, attaching that to not just the term product we have now, but then to an IUL, to a whole life, and you know, potentially having some convertibility that that term product can do too. So all of these ideas and things that you know you're selling currently, we're trying to help develop, but there's a lot of really great things that we're gonna go into in the webinar series that easy to sell, easy, even as a supplement, you know, it, there's some really, really neat things I think you're gonna like. So hopefully you guys can make it for the next couple of weeks when we have these webinars and trainings. And if you can't, come talk to me. I can do all this stuff one-on-one. -on -one. I am a resource, like I said, for pretty much anything that you guys might need. And um, after the call, I'll probably be reaching out to you and just letting you know some of these leave behind marketing questions. And if you have a chance to answer them, that'd be awesome. Um, I will stick around for a little bit if you guys wanna ask me any questions in the chat in the meantime, but um, I'll send it back over to John Paul. It's all I had for today, just more of an intro and let you know what's to come. Awesome, I was reaching for my mute button there. <laughs> I appreciate that, Audrey. Thank you for your time today. Uh, I know we've got several folks on the team uh, that have written with them and have been pleased with the product. So I appreciate the, uh, the uh, information today. And um, thanks again. You bet. Awesome. So next up on the agenda um, is I wanted to talk about really the fall tour dates. Uh, just to remind folks, uh, listen for a city near you and make a note of it. This has also been posted up on the group meet, uh, but want to make sure that folks are aware of these dates. You definitely want to try to make sure that you are there. Uh, in a, a location near you, try to bring somebody with you as well. Um, I know a lot of folks, you know, on the team are building, you know, already, but some folks haven't yet started to do that. So that's going to really going to be the topic of what I want to talk to you about here uh, in a little bit as well and kind of how to kickstart you growing your own organization. So um, first off, uh, September 10th, which is on next Tuesday in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we got September 11th in Pasadena, California. Uh, September 11th also in Indianapolis. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts, the dates to be determined yet still. Phoenix, Arizona, September 19th. Denver, Colorado, September 25th. Kansas City, September 25th. Dallas, September 26th. Nashville, October 2nd. Nolens, October 9th. Orlando, October 16th. Baltimore, Maryland, October 17th, and then here in Atlanta, date still TBD. Um, imagine that'll be in October at some point, so we'll get the dates out for those once Symmetry knows about those, but um, very, very important, you know, for you to be able to get there. Um, I think they're planning to do corporate overviews a couple of weeks before and a couple of weeks after each of those events. Uh, definitely important for you to get yourself and some other folks there if you're looking to try to grow and build your team. <clears throat> so which is kind of what I want to talk to you a little bit about, N not in depth, you know, in, in regards to, um, to, you know, zip recruiter ads and other things that we've got uh, going on, uh, you know, to, to, to recruit and, and build teams at large, because um, again, you, you really have to kind of feel confident in what you're doing and, and be able to, in my opinion, to, to really handle a lot of those situations when you're talking to cold market recruiters right and some of you you'll know when you're ready for it and there's no specific timeline on when that is but some people are a little nervous about that and, th and that's fine when you're ready you'll be ready right but at the same time I think you know you've heard me say this before far too many people overlook uh, warm market recruiting just people that you know and I think sometimes it, people under or under the impression that they've got to go out and recruit 30 or 40 people to, to be successful here you'll get the 30 or 40 people, but you don't have to do it on your own. And you don't have to start off that way. You'd be surprised at how tremendously impactful just recruiting one or two people. They can then recruit one or two people. What kind of an impact that will make in your business early on? 
So that's what I want to talk about, you know, and also leaning on your upline. There are plenty of people in my organization who have not uh, done zip recruiter ads and gone to that next level of recruiting, but they know somebody and they have somebody specifically uh, that I've gotten on three-way calls with them. Lean on your upline. I'll help or your mentor will help you, you know, do a three-way call and answer all the questions for somebody you know personally to help recruit them. But at the same time, you can listen in and kind of hear what they say so you can learn at the same time that we're getting this other person interested in the opportunity, right? Um, so the point in that is don't, don't wait, right? Uh, we've all got people in our past and our specific spheres of influence that we know um, that may be looking for an opportunity, maybe, maybe looking uh, for something else other than what they're doing, right? Um, but, but the other thing is I think far too many times people have a tendency to, um, to you judge who you think is going to be interested in this. And you can't do that. Just, just share the opportunity with folks. <clears throat> Reach out to people. Let them know what you're doing. Let them know how excited you are about the opportunity. And if you're speaking to people that you know a warm market, don't go at them as if, you know, hey, you know, what are you doing? I got this great opportunity. You know, you want to come work with me. Sometimes when you do that, people get a little bit put off because they're automatically thinking, you know, hey, wait a minute. But if you call them under the, under the um, pretense that you're just calling to follow up with them, how have you been doing? Hey, I found a great opportunity, man. Look, I'm looking to grow my team in other areas. And because I respect you and I know you understand the kind of skill sets that would be, uh, uh, that would allow someone to be successful here. Hey, if you know anybody that's looking for an opportunity, not happy with what they're doing, whether part-time or full-time, if you would just keep me in mind and refer them over to me, this is what I'm looking for and this is what I'm doing, and plant that seed. They'll tell you if they're interested or not. They'll let you know by, that, by saying, hey, well, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, I, I might be interested, right? But it's also about timing, right? So <clears throat> you, we all know you don't, you, don't, you don't enjoy the fruit the day you plant the seed, right? So you've got to plant these seeds with folks and share what you do on social media. I mean, pictures from conference, I put on my Facebook page, leaderboards, you know, I put up posts on there about different things that I've done for symmetry because I want people around me to know what I do. Right. And I want people that I know that I've planted this seed with a while ago. I want them to continue to see my success here at symmetry. So it further reiterates and reinforces what I spoke to them about, not just because I talked to them about it a year ago, but they're seeing my continued growth and success here. Now people have a tendency to want to take notice because you have to keep in mind, people are in different places in their life, right? They, they may be in a situation where right now they're happy with what they're doing. You know, they're not interested in anything else you got going on, right? Because they're content, but we know how that goes, right? couple of months now from now, you get the reorg letter, you get the merger, you get the acquisition, you know, you get the, the realignments and now your position's eliminated. And now there's people, all of a sudden people are like, well, oh, wait a minute, what am I going to do with my life? You know, oh, you know what? Yeah. Hey, John Paul called me and well, let me, let me just see if I can find out a little bit more about that. Right. And so that's the point I'm making is plant these seeds. I would, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, Jeremiah, uh, Penny Blackman, and myself uh, led Jeremiah uh, Jacobs' call, a team builder call yesterday, and this is exactly what I shared with them. And so, one of the things I talked about specifically, and some of you were on that same call. I apologize for being redundant and, and reiterative, but this is important, you know, for folks to hear. You know, so so just personally, um, uh, you know, how this works, right? Um, is is uh, when I first came into this, you know, I've, I've been here a little over a year, like 13 months-ish or so now, just, you know, with Symmetry. Um, and uh, I was recruiting before I had my license. You guys know that because because of my background and what I've done in the spheres of influence, my past lives, I had people that would be rock stars at what we do here, right? Some of them have taken interest. Some of them haven't, right? Some of them still will take interest that haven't come around yet. And I'll tell you what I mean. I'll show you what I mean by that. Is so I had a, a guy in, in Southern California um, uh, uh, who was a general manager at Brinks with me back in the day. Um, and when I first found this in, in last summer, I was talking to him because he was looking to transition out of somewhere where he was at. He wasn't happy, you know, and I shared it with him, you know, um, and, 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 um, and, you know, during that same time, he was looking for another opportunity. And, you know, he found something, you know, within a week or two, week or so of me first talking to him, another 
job, right, um, in, in Southern California, paying pretty well and a title and all that stuff like that. So, so he wasn't really that interested at the time, but I shared the opportunity with him, um, told him all about it. He's on my Facebook. I've texted him shots of the screenshots of the leaderboards at different times and stuff like that. I added him to the group me back in the day. So he's, he's been, you know, from a distance on the sidelines seeing what's going on. Well, just recently, I guess things happened at this other opportunity that didn't work out so well or he wasn't happy with it. And a couple of weeks back, he called me up and said, hey, you know, what, what do I need to do? You know, he told me the whole story about the other situation. But the point is, that was a year in the making. Right now, whether he still works out here or not, I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't know yet because he's trying to, you know, he's not left that other opportunity yet. He's trying to get out of here. Um, but the point is, that was a year, you know, before he came around to where he was genuinely interested enough to start pursuing me to ask about this opportunity. Right. Um, another situation is uh, I got an, another gentleman in Virginia uh, named Phil Wood, uh, who uh, was president circle at Brinks with me many, many years. I knew him for I've known him for 25 years, um, but but Phil has had some 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 um, some challenge, challenges uh, uh, with some you know his health, uh, and he's not able to pursue this opportunity himself right now, uh, but but definitely interested, but he just can't do it yet, and I and I feel completely confident that he will at some point, um, but we talk regularly because we're friends. He sees my Facebook posts, he stays connected, and. On Saturday, I was in the middle of my dial sessions. It was about maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock, and my phone rings, and it's him. I was between dials, so I went and grabbed my phone real quick, right? And he said, hey, John Paul, hey, how's it been going, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I'm at a garage sale here in Norfolk, and I'm here, and I heard, overheard these two guys talking that are both sales guys, type A personalities, extroverted go-getters, both at different companies. They just happened to meet here at this garage sale and we're talking about what they were looking for and this and that and the other, just random conversation he overheard and he's standing there with them. And so he started telling them about me and symmetry. He put me on a three-way call with these guys at a yard sale. They're both already sent their packet back in. One's already started his license studies and the other one I'm following up with Monday at 11. Just because he of a seed I planted with him a year ago and I get a random phone call from a garage sale on Saturday. So my point in saying all that is that it's about the activity. You'll reap the rewards and the harvest if you plant the seeds with folks because you never know. You may call somebody that you think that it would be a great fit and everything in their world is perfect today. And they're not interested. They're still your friend, but they're just not interested in this. We all know how quickly that can change. Right. And now all of a sudden they're very interested. So the point is, don't be afraid to let people know what you do. What we do is, is phenomenal work. You, we all know the culture here. We know what we do to help people and share that with, with as many people as you can. You don't want to find out that you had somebody that you knew could have been successful here and their life fell apart because something happened, happened with their job or their other business. And they could have picked up the ball here with us on your team, but they didn't because they didn't know about it because you didn't share it with them, right? So that, that's, that's my, my advice is just making sure that you're focusing on that, you know, and, and letting people know what you do, right? Uh, we all know what it takes to be successful here, right? We can't determine someone's, predetermine someone's ability to succeed because that lies within each individual. You know, you can't dictate someone's attitude, work ethic, and drive. But what you can do is share it with people that you think would be a good fit, right? Um, and again, for folks who have not started building your teams, this is my challenge to all of you. Whether you're on in my organization or Chris's or Jeremiah Nolan's, it doesn't matter. Or you're building your own teams. The month of September, you've got all of these, these tours coming up, right? So I want each of you all. Some of you are already doing zip recruiter ads and building. That's that that this particular conversation is not necessarily directed at you, but I, I still think it makes sense to add the the warm market folks. But most of you are already doing that if you're doing zip recruiter ads anyway. The folks that I know, right? But but the challenge is this: a lot of you haven't started building your own teams yet. Think about all the people that you know in your past lives: relatives, friends, coworkers, other people from your past. Find one person. 
that you think is looking for an opportunity and how this could change their lives and try to just get you one person this month to start off with for the month of September. It's the sixth. You got plenty of time. And if you live in or around or near one of these, one of these fall tour places, make sure you try to get them there. You go and bring them with you. Right. And, and the key is this, get them on the phone with your mentor on a three-way call, share the overview videos that most of you should have, or you can check with your mentors to make sure you have that, uh, that folks can watch, you know, just to kind of pique their interest that they're there. They know a little bit about the company in general, and then get them on the phone. Some of you are already having success in your own right. Your production and your story speaks for itself, you know, and I want to make sure that each of you start to build your team, even if it's one person, because you could recruit that one person that's the next Stella. You could recruit the next one person that's the Brett Applin or the Jeremiah Nolan or the John Paul Vetter. You don't know who you're going to meet. And that person can completely change the course and direction of your business because of what they do and their production numbers for you and your team. And there's a, there's, you guys have seen me share in the group. I see, and I love the fact that so many other people are chiming in and sharing uh, other inspirational memes on the, on the group me. Uh, I love that. Um, but you've seen one that I've shared before. And if you're relatively new, you might not have seen it because it's been a while uh, since I shared it. But I'm actually going to read it because it's actually printed and it's up on my wall, on my cork board right here. And the one that I love the most, I think, is one day you'll tell your story of how you've overcome what you're going through right now and it will become part of someone else's survival guide. Stella, think about that with you, which you shared with us on the call last week, right? It's incredible. So the, the point is, reach out to somebody that you think might be a good fit. Try to focus on getting one person. Just get one. And I think you'll see how that it makes an impact. Some of you will fall short of your promotion level goals just a little bit on your own pen. Let's say you need 7,500 bucks or you need 10 grand. Just to make sure you understand how that works, if say you need $7,500 and you write five and you have somebody on your team that writes three, you get credit for eight. You check the box for your promotion because their production counts for you. So that's what I mean by making sure that you try to just bring on one or two people because it can make a huge difference, you know, in your growth within your organization and you getting paid more commission on the business you're already writing anyway. Hmm, that doesn't suck, right? So anyway, that, that's what I really want to talk about, you know, as far as warm market recording and making sure that folks are focused on that. Uh, even if you don't feel like you're personally ready to branch out and do a broader, you know, full on massive recruiting, I think you'll find that if you just start with one or two people, I think it would just be a huge, huge difference in your world. I'm going to open it up to quick questions on that uh, before we move on. Any questions on that? Bueller? Bueller? Some of you are too young to remember that. If you haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, come on, go watch it. All right, so we'll move on. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about here, really, is I want to have an opportunity uh, to tee up uh, this gentleman um, uh, who's on my team. And, uh, and, and I'm truly blessed and grateful uh, you know, for, for uh, this, this gentleman you know, to be on my team. You know, we all talk about running buddies that we've got to bring on to, the, 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 to help us grow in this business and finding that running buddy. And, um, and, and Mr. Brett Applin has certainly been, you know, my, my key running buddy so far in this business and is killing it, doing extremely well. So proud of him and where he's at um, and, uh, and, and, and growing his team and organization and helping other folks to be successful as well. And I just want to share with you just a couple of stats real quick. Uh, just from last month, we shared the, the, the leaderboards for, for this month already off to a phenomenal start this month, which is insane. Uh, this month is going to be even better uh, for him and his team. But um, last month, uh, he already qualified for his first month of key leader uh, promotion and uh, in his second month of qualification for that. Um, and, uh, uh, and then uh, then has his eyes on the prize of agency owner qualification you know, in the, in the, the few months thereafter, uh, and is well on track to do that. So, so proud of this young man. Uh, last month, uh, had four riders on his team for $37,126 in AP last month for his team specifically. Um, so, so phenomenal job. Uh, but 
I really want Mr. Brett Applin to have an opportunity to share a little bit about what he does with his team in recruiting. Um, as you heard earlier, Miss Danielle Gregg and John Nicholas, both last month and this month, just off to a phenomenal start with their warm market and things like that, in addition to working their leads and such. And I see a lot of questions and things going up on the group me about advice and guidance on how to help make that a reality uh, for you. And I thought, what better opportunity than to have Mr. Brett Applin on the call uh, with a couple of his folks and kind of talk about that specifically. Brett, you with us, brother? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Absolutely. John Paul, good morning, and uh, I just want everybody to know I did order my Apple Watch from John Hancock. I got my own personal policy, and I couldn't be more more thrilled because uh, they'll do a little virtual uh, health test to tell you what your virtual age is, and I can't tell you I'm terribly happy with mine, so I got the watch, and I'm going to be on a program here pretty quickly, but I uh, appreciate the time to come on this morning. Again, I'm uh, under John Paul Vetter. And, uh, and maybe just talk a little about some finer points as to what we were doing. I think uh, if you'll allow me to kind of talk about just a little bit of the philosophy that I started to adopt uh, after a while in recruiting, because not everything's easy for everybody at, at first. It certainly wasn't for me. Um, and then kind of the styles of how to get agents up and running and profitable, it seems to be my mantra. And it seems to be something that I really want to see, see happen. And I've seen that, uh, you know, for all the success you might see on one end, you didn't see all the the bloopers or, or the uh, almost and, and, and miss the spot kind of stuff, and we lost people. So so I want to talk about that a little bit today, but more importantly, at some point, I'm going to ask two agents of mine to come on, and, and I think the way we'd like to guide that conversation is, um, you know, just a little bit about how you approached your warm market. I think that's what every, everybody has a warm market, uh, but how did you approach them, and what are the kinds of things that uh, – uh, were said to them to get an opportunity to sit with them, right? Um, so Danielle, Greg, and, and John Nicholas will be joining us as well. So quickly, um, you know, as recruits come in, I've I've watched. Uh, there, there, everything needs to have a strategy when people come in, right? So something that's burned in my brain early on when I started here, before I was recruiting is, um, and I'm holding on just like, I, and I appreciate Stella so much because I, I feel like some of the thoughts that she had shared were some of my own early on, that the first rule of business is to stay in business. And, and so what did that mean to me, right? And what that meant to me is I've got to, uh, I've got to, the only resource I have is time. So I've got to be able to spend my time well, I've got to be able to turn this into some money, and I've got to be able to fuel the business to keep it going. Um, clearly, we're not all going r rushing out buying new, you know, houses and cars in the first month we do this business. But uh, uh, but the first rule is stay in business. So that's one thing for me. That's something entirely different when we bring somebody into this business. We almost have a little bit of a responsibility to line out a strategy for them. Um, and what can that look like? Right. Everybody joins this business for their own reasons. Certainly, some are part time, some are full time. Some just want to be agents, some want to build an agency. But at minimum, we should show them uh, a few different things. And if I had to recall back when I was new or newer, um, I had a lot of things going through my head that uh, would affect my belief system. Belief systems, everything in this business. So what were the things I had to learn? Um, it wasn't just, you know, selling a new product. It was figuring out what kind of products were the right products for this customer or client. How do I get them into ops? How do I understand the symmetry, uh, promotable guidelines and leadership uh, guidelines so I could win at this? There's a lot in your head that's hard to digest, right? And so you have to count on your mentor to give you a strategy. So I remember John Paul helping me out along the way as well. And, and, and so the, the whole point of this conversation, I guess, is that when you do bring good people into this business, um, you, you got to line them out with a strategy. And if we know there's a few things that are right in front of them, Number one, they might have been through stage one, two, and three training, but it's really important that they take the fast track to understand that they can certify that they get, you know, the baseline, right? And then secondarily, I asked them while we're waiting on things, maybe it's logins, maybe it's, you know, getting ready to buy some leads and start doing some practice styles that uh, you need to start thinking about your warm market. Certainly when I when I, you know, introduce the business to somebody, I say that you don't have to cold call, 
But just because you're going to have leads available doesn't mean you should go into the witness protection program tied to your friends and family. And I realize that some of us have friends and family who have worn out friends and family selling things like Mona V and Amway and things like that. They don't require a state license to do that. We do. Um, so we have to kind of set ourselves up a little bit. I will, um, uh, and we're going to talk about warm market. I will even let you know, kind of very similar to what John Paul has said. Um, I got sisters who had sold just about everything under the sun like that to the family. And I'd say the family is a little worn out with things like this. So I have a brother-in-law who's very, uh, uh, you know, conservative about wanting to talk about something new with other family members. And I let it sit for a while. And finally, my brother-in-law leaned to me and he goes, are you ever going to talk to me about what you do? I go, if you'd like, you know, because I knew he was that style of individual. And, and, you know, going through a path of conversation, what we found out is he had some old 401ks that had stocks that were really undervalued, weren't doing anything. He didn't want to turn over his entire portfolio, but those stocks in particular were just like, you couldn't lose to get those out. And, you know, as you probably know with old uh, employers when they have a 401k program, you know, once they leave that company, they can't do anything with that. They can't continue to contribute into it. It just sits like that unless they decide to roll it over into something else. And most people don't understand how to do that. So, so, so that was that. Not to go down a rabbit hole, but, you know, when we're talking about getting a new agent up and running, uh, what is the strategy? Well, the first thing we want to do is get them to 65% as fast as possible. So all eyes are on getting to 7,500 sold and then whatever the install number is two months in a row. Um, if we can teach people how to get um, a, a variety of products sold, uh, loaded into ops, and accomplish those two goals, they get a pretty good understanding of what it takes to do this business on that side, right? But can you imagine trying to take all that on mentally and pick up old bonus leads at the same time and say, congratulations, you're in business for yourself. Good luck. That's that's not the, – the, the folks that are going to sit back and, and figure this out on their own are going to be very few, if at all. So, so the point of sharing all this is um, I've asked all new agents that if you're going to get into this business, you should make a list. Um, and don't be shy about making a list of people that are family members in other states. You can get a non-resident license. As a matter of fact, I think it probably behooves you to have one non-resident license in the future put on your business card that your agency is, has offices in two different states. They can see that right on your business card. It gives you a lot more credibility to your competition who might come in with their licenses laminated and they've got tattoos on their forearms. You might look a little different, right? So, so we do that. And so nonetheless, uh, Danielle Gregg and John Nicholas have done a great job of taking that to heart. And they've put a list together of these people that they thought would be good. And what we do is we sit back and we talk about it. We talk about who are they, how old are they. Let's go into the rating system together. And you know a thing or two about your family. So let's consider a dry run, a first go at this. And, um, and, and let's see what kinds of products might be a good fit for them, which helps the agent kind of get their mind around it. And at the same time, uh, cut them loose with a little confidence that they can have this conversation. So, I know it, it's, there's not a lot of big mystery to this, but what this has done ultimately for them is it helped them sell a, a wider range of products. I know Danielle is, in her short time has sold mortgage protection. Uh, she sold IUL, even an annuity, um, just a variety of products. You know, John Nicholas this week was able to tackle term, whole life, IUL, um, you know, and guaranteed issue whole life. Um, so that was kind of neat, right? It helps people get up and running. That alone will help fuel their business to start, uh, at least from back to that belief system, uh, get that belief that, hey, I can do this. I'm so far ahead of the game with my number right now, I can now struggle maybe a little bit with the, and learn about the lead and how to get involved in that and do that. So I want to stop right there if I can and maybe just invite Danielle Gregg on the call. I think uh, Star Six will have mute you. And Danielle, just real quickly, when you approach your warm market, what is your go-to uh, approach when you call them on the phone, if you don't mind? Are you, that, are you out there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. 
Um, I approach my warm market by calling and saying, hi, Brett, how are you doing? The reason I'm calling Good. you is because I started a new career and I would love to share it with you. What's a good time, morning, afternoon, or evening? And that's how I approach it. So, I have two different ones. So, so Danielle, if, if, if you don't let me ask, and a lot of people think that's too simple, right? But is there, is there a way not to tell them too much in order to just get time in front of them? Uh, they ask. Okay, so if you, they ask, uh, hey, so what is it that you're doing? My other go-to um, one, and I'll share this one with you because I've shared it on the group me, but I'll share it because we got a new people, is, hi, Brett, how are you doing? And I stop, small talk. Brett, the reason why I'm calling is I am in the process of starting a new business and possibly making a new career change. I'm excited about it. I'm going through training, but I need your help. I pause yep. for a minute. Because I value your opinion, Brett, I was hoping that I could pop by your house. What's a good time? Morning, noon, afternoon? evening just you right. know so, go with it. so you so you asking for help along the way there's nothing wrong with that right right there's nothing wrong with it i do have where they'll ask me so what is it you're doing and i tell them i don't want to share that with you right now i don't have time but i will pop in your by your house and you know i'll share it with you then i never reveal what i'm doing right and, and the other thing is we don't have to just make this all about business. Like I haven't talked to you for five years, but all of a sudden you get me on the phone, you know, as a mystery, we can, we could have coffee. We can have lunch. We can catch up first. We can talk about how the kids are doing and then we can get together and kind of like merge that in a little bit. You know, that's pretty good. That's awesome. Right. Um, John Nicholas, uh, I hope you're out there too. I know you're driving right now. Unmute star six. Uh, what was your approach, if you don't mind us asking? Uh, hey, Brett, can you hear me? I can. Good morning. Hey, good morning, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for me, um, uh, the warm market has just been a great way for me to kind of set a base in conjunction with just everything else that I'm trying to learn being a new symmetry agent. So um, so for me, I'm from New Jersey originally, but I'm out in California now. So I'm kind of working both of those markets uh, simultaneously. Um, in California, just a, a lot of people that I've uh, seen in the past week or so and was able to write applications for this week were more of uh, people that I knew um, in my immediate circle and have had discussions where they were just actually asking um, ongoing what I was doing, um, what was going on from a career standpoint um, uh, with me. And then just from what I had heard from them uh, in relation to some of the things they had mentioned that they were missing or didn't have, um, it was kind of a good introduction to kind of say, hey, you know, um, since you, you asked, you know, I can actually help you with some of those things you mentioned to me a, a while ago. Are you interested in uh, discussing those? And uh, that kind of led into just getting some additional information from them, sitting down with them, and then, uh, you know, via your help and just, you know, the great support um, overall with uh, you and John Paul was able to kind of figure out what were the best products uh, for them and kind of craft that. So, uh, really being able to help them out, but also learn the products and go through the process of doing it hands-on has really been great. So that was more of the immediate California market. And then in New Jersey, I actually have a, a massive group chat with about 25 of my relatives there. Um, and really just, you know, they're ongoing asking what's going on with everybody. So that's kind of a good in introduction for me um, just to kind of uh, get their current information, current um, email addresses, and just really kind of set up a time when then I can further those conversations with them individually. So that's kind of my strategy right now in addition to, you know, kind of honing the other ongoing skills that I just need to keep improving with the uh, leads and dials, et cetera, and, uh, you know, moving forward. Yeah, and I appreciate it. I appreciate both of you for, uh, for, for giving us a little insight into doing that. So if we're respected by our inner circle, they want to hear what we're doing next. Why? They care about us. And they also respect us that we've been doing something in our past, you know, for some period of time and had some level of success at it. Um, people, people are interested and they want to sit down and talk. 
Um, I I wouldn't uh, I can't tell you the the in the the alternative to this is just tell people to go buy one A leads and and get after it. And while that works, and we know the system works, um, why not help your new agent uh, fund their business, build a huge belief system, feel better about what they're doing, and and not and not take so much of the unknown, uh, to, you know, uh, to sleep with them every night where it becomes painful. You know, in the case where John Nicholas and Danielle did what they did, they're ahead of the game, and that feels good to be ahead of the game. And so now they've bought some breathing room to start tackling leads, which would be the next strategy, if you will. So, so that I don't want to take up a lot of time here on this topic, but I hope that helps uh, those on the call. John Paul? John, you out there? Yeah, I was trying to get back to my mute button. Sorry about that. No, that's great stuff. I certainly appreciate you being able to, to share that, Brett. You know, you've been doing such a phenomenal job. And, Danielle and John Nicholas, and it's so proud of you guys and how well you've started off. And just so many folks on this team in general, just starting to gain traction, um, who've gone through struggles and, and, and challenges and really starting to catch some wind in their sails. And, you know, just couldn't be more proud of, you know, the, the folks and your stories and, and, and where you are now versus, you know, where you may have come from, you know, even recently, you know, uh, you know in the, the tremendous amount of progress that you you've had in a short amount of time, you know, and continuing to build on that success. Right. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I, we're coming up on time here. So I just want to, I want to punt it out to the team here just for a moment to see if there are any other uh, final questions in closing, and then uh, we'll get on to uh, the dial day and start lining out next week. Any other questions from the team before we, uh, we shut it down, you know, for myself or Brett, for, for Danielle, for John Nicholas, any, anything, you might have. Awesome. Well, listen, again, thank you for all you do. You guys have a great day. Good luck and good selling. And let's come back in next week and make next week an even better week than this week.